in this video we're going to be covering frequently asked questions about our sublimation printing and pressing using all the equipment from am.co.za. Why do we need protection slash brown tissue paper while we are heat pressing? While heat pressing from edge to edge on your heat press as well as using fabric that has holes in it just like this mesh here the protection paper slash tissue paper slash liner paper that we use at the back there is to prevent the ink from going past your material either on the edge or through these holes and then it permanently taints your blanket there and it cannot come out. Why can you not press onto cotton or natural fibers? Here we have a shirt that is 60% polyester and 40% cotton. Here we have opposite we've got 60% cotton and 40% polyester and as you can see the difference between these two is the vibrance and the amount of ink accepted to the shirt so that being said every time that you heat press onto mainly cotton material once you go ahead and wash it you're going to lose whatever percentage that is of cotton the ink will disappear whereas if you are onto mostly synthetic polyester you have most of the ink that's accepted and bonds with the actual fibers. So that being said, we have no choice to stay away from natural fibers and go with the synthetic fibers as it's very impractical to waste your time and money on natural fibers rather than pressing onto synthetic polyester. Why does the sublimation blanket slash heat mat take so long to settle down? When you get your heat press for the first time, you need to settle your mat. Now, there are many ways to do it, but the easiest is to make sure that you bring your mat forward all the way until it is just tight enough and not over tighten. Then you need to run this machine for at least 60 hours or even do it over a few days so that you can level out your mat. Why I say that is that when you get this machine, your mat is a little bit untensioned and incorrectly tensioned forward so that you need to make sure that you actually heat this up enough so that it can stretch out and level out so that when you're doing your heat pressing it's one level across the entire front of your tensioning bar and not little wavy lines like that otherwise you'll end up getting streaks through your press and you always think that there's something wrong with your heat press no, that is not the case. You just need to settle your mat in and make sure that it equals out so that it can stay that way until you carry on pressing in the future. Why can you not print directly onto the material and then put it into the heat press? The reason why you cannot print directly onto your material first and then go and heat press it is purely because depending on the material that you're printing onto depends on how the ink lands and then also saturates through the material. So if I can explain it in a better way. Paper, no matter what paper you're using, is always going to be the same absorption rate compared to your material. So printing onto paper means that I'm always going to get the same absorption, which is let's say 30% into the paper, which means that it's not going to go further into the paper and then you don't have too much saturation. So if I can say this, if I put a drop of ink onto let's say canvas, it's going to spread quite far. But if I put a drop onto paper, it'll only go so far. Now, if I keep using that same paper, instead of swapping and changing my materials, that means I'm always going to get a perfect print, rather printing on paper, which then absorbs it to a certain point and keeps all the detail, rather than printing onto material that the ink will run. And then when you go and heat press it, not only is it going to heat press off of your material and into your mat, you're also going to have a massive dispersion of gas which is very toxic for you. So you need to make sure that you use paper first and we do not go straight to material. Otherwise, you're not going to have success. How long does our ink last once it's been pressed onto material? Sublimation printing lasts longer in general compared to most of our other signage applications. Now the reason for this is that when you sublimate into the material, it's going to bond there over 200 degrees and it's not going to just run or scratch off because it's embedded in the actual synthetic fibers of the material rather than like Ecosolvent or UV or any other version of printing, it will stay on top rather than embedding into the fiber. Now, I can't say how long it's going to actually last 
because it depends on where you put it. But I will say that your material will depict on how long the print lasts. Because if your material is only going to last two years, that means that your ink is going to survive much longer and your material is going to break down first before the ink is going to fade. So keep in mind that depending on the material you use depends on how long it lasts. Like if you use a UV coated material, you could have something that lasts up to 15 years. Once you've heat pressed your material, can you accidentally iron the ink out? If you think about it, your iron only gets to around about 150 to 180 degrees. And that is with water or without water. Now, keeping that in mind, your heat press over here, you're going to be heat pressing between 195 degrees all the way to 240 degrees Celsius, depending on what fabric you're going to heat press on. So, that being said, ironing out your ink is very unlikely purely because the temperature of the iron is not hot enough to surpass the temperature that you are heat pressing. So that being said, the answer is no. You cannot iron out your ink with an iron and even if you're using a steam pressed iron, it is not possible. The ink will stay embedded in the material as long as you do not exceed the temperature of what you heat pressed at. Does having two print heads give you better quality or just faster printing? Generally, two print heads is not going to give you better quality. However, it's going to give you better function. Now, when I say function, I'm referring to spot color. Now, if I'm going to use my shirt as a reference, the red that I have on my shirt. Now, when we talk about spot color and function, the more print heads you have, the more likely you are to spot this color and actually print it true CMYK so that you don't end up getting a variation of this color red. So for function, for those that know how to, it's better having two heads because you can match your customer's color identically rather than almost a shade of color near it. However, having one print head is a lot easier for a first time user purely because you don't have to calibrate two heads to line up for a single print rather than having one head that needs no calibration and it's easier to print and have a good print off the start rather than having two heads that need to match in the same place while printing. What is the best printing pass for best quality? Generally speaking, we use about eight pass for our sublimation and that's because sublimation doesn't dry instantly as well as it's not too thick. So for inks that are thick and dry instantly, you wanna try and stick to a six pass because of speed as well as quality. And as an example for our DTF printers, we go all the way up to 12 pass and that's because of how the ink dries. So again, our best pass is eight for quality for sublimation to get the most amount of color and vibrancy while you're printing. What besides clothing can you make with sublimation? Besides all this clothing that we can make with sublimation, we can also do something like this, sublimated mug. Now this one comes blank just like you can see and then on the other side we have gone ahead and sublimated it. Now just like this we can do mugs, plates, key rings and there is a massive variety just like this that you can do, not just clothing. So and in my opinion this side of marketing is much larger than clothing and these are readily available. What makes the ink once printed onto paper transfer from that paper onto material? Once we've printed our ink onto our paper, we go from a solid substance, which is the paper and ink, and that goes through our heat press under temperature and tension, and that goes from a solid and converts into a gas, which is commonly known as burst. And when that burst process happens, it bursts into the material and chemically bonds with the material so that it does not come out whatsoever. And that's how you get it from ink and paper into your material. And that is it for today's video. We have answered some of the most frequently asked questions about sublimation. And if you're having some of your own questions, go ahead and leave a comment in the section below and we shall get to it. If you're wanting to see more videos like this, go ahead, click on the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you can get notified on our future videos. And again, thank you for watching. 
AI may eventually take over, but what's for certain is that smart machines are already operating all over the world right now. So stay ahead with am.co.za. For 11 years, they've been the leader in CNC and printing machines like CNC routers, large format printers, vinyl cutters, laser cutters, plasma cutters, DTF printers, and many more. Visit am.co.za showrooms in Sunny Rock, Joburg, and Montague Gardens, Cape Town, or WhatsApp high to 060-600-6000. For more info, am.co.za, achievement matters.